Welcome to Central Church's online devotional ministry. These short devotions are intended to provide inspiration and hope to all people, including our friends, neighbors, and church members. We hope that you find them both meaningful and helpful as you search for spiritual food. It's our prayer that you discover new ways to serve Christ and be about His work in the world. Here's Pastor Bob. Today I'd like to talk about a human quality, the quality of speech. Speech and the use of words is a unique human gift and ability. We read in the book of Genesis, and God said, Genesis 1, and God said, and creation came into being. We are created in the spiritual image of God, and as God speaks, we are also given the ability to speak. Speech and words can be beautiful. A beautiful poem, a beautiful piece of literature, kind words that are spoken, great speeches that are given and move people to the deepest part of their being. But speech can also be misused. We misuse speech in many ways. There was a gorilla named Coco, born in the San Francisco Zoo, who lived most of her life at the Gorilla Institute in Woodside, California. And Coco was a remarkable animal. She was taught sign language, and she used, learned to use a keyboard and was familiar with at least 2,000 English words. Now, Coco even though she was very remarkable and extremely intelligent, was a gorilla. And one day, Coco lost her temper, as gorillas sometimes do. And Coco was a very strong gorilla, as gorillas are. And when she lost her temper, she went over and she tore the sink off the wall in her room. When this was discovered, they came in. And Coco not only knew sign language, but she was very fond of cats. And Coco, in the course of her 47-year life, had many cats as pets. And so when they came in and they confronted Coco, and they said to her, Why? Why did you tear the room apart? And Coco went to her keyboard and responded, The cat did it. That's one of the ways that we, as human beings, and even as animals, can misuse the gift of speech. I'd like to begin today by reading from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, where the writer of Ecclesiastes, generally attributed to Solomon, called the preacher, says this, Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know that they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. Let your words be few. A dream comes when there are many cares, and many words mark the speech of a fool. The writer of Ecclesiastes tells us to be careful in our use of words. And sometimes we're not careful. You know, in the Bible, we are told about the reality of sin. And in the church, and in our experience, what sins do we emphasize? Well, we hear about sins that are related to justice. We hear in the church about the sins of the flesh. We hear in the Bible about the sins of the tongue. There are a number of biblical lists of sins found in the writings of the Apostle Paul, found even in the last chapter of the book of Revelation. And these are very broad lists, and sins of the tongues are not neglected. Dissension, rage, gossip, lies, perjury, blasphemy, deceit. And these are only some of the sins that we practice that use words. Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, 
tells us to be very careful in our use of words, and he talks about oaths and how it's really not necessary to take an oath. Let your yes be yes, and let your no be no. How wise we would be if we took the teachings of Jesus, and if we took the words of the writer of Ecclesiastes to heart. Do not be quick with your mouth. God is in heaven. You are on earth. Let your words be few. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Let integrity of speech be a characteristic of your life and of my life as a Christian. In the 19th century, the hymn writer Robert Lowry I wrote a hymn that we sometimes still sing. It's about singing, my life flows on in endless song. And then it ends this way, since Christ the Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? The demeanor of our lives should be to articulate and sing praise to God, not to misuse the gift of speech. Psalm 96 verses 1 through 6. Sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise, he is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Let us sing praise to the Lord. Let us tell of the marvelous works of God. Let us use the gift of speech to bring glory to God. Let us pray. Our Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you give to us. We thank you for the ability to communicate and use words. May we use the words of our lives, to proclaim your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. A Reflection on Springtime Thank you, Lord, that you never run out of springtime. Year after year, it comes to us through no effort of our own. We thank you that you never get weary of directing the migration of the birds, that you never forget to awaken the trees after a long winter of rest, and that no energy crisis has ever kept you from raising flowers from the cold, dark dirt. Since you do all this so generously and so faithfully for things that don't resist your promptings, perhaps the only reason you don't do it more often for us is our stubborn determination to do it for ourselves. Thank you for allowing us to see signs in nature, in scripture, and circumstances that assure us that you are not asleep on the job, that you are indeed at work while the earth is at rest, and that you are at work even when we are restless. Sometimes when we are desperate to see a dramatic display of your power, Lord, we forget to notice the quiet reminders that you place all around us. In the springtime, as we watch the earth awaken from its deep winter sleep, we see what extraordinary things you can do with such ordinary things as gentle rain and warm breezes. May we learn to hear your quiet voice, Lord, so you don't have to speak to us in thunder May we learn to see your power in the everyday order and beauty of the universe so that we don't waste our life waiting for you to prove yourself in a few dramatic exceptions. We thank you that even the earth sings your praise. May we not become so preoccupied with this life that we fail to hear the melodies of heaven. Tune our hearts to sing of your grace, Lord so that we can be part of the glorious symphony of praise that the whole universe will one day perform. Psalm 98, let the rivers clap their hands, 
Let the mountains sing together for joy. We invite you to visit our church website at cpcturanum.org to learn more about our ministries. You can also visit us on Facebook at Central Presbyterian Church Turanum. Please join us as we renew lives, inspire hope, and serve others. God bless you.